many things in Indonesia that are going very, very well, and, and certainly the current administration and uh, the DPR needs to be applauded for these great steps forward. Um, but behind these successes, as we heard earlier today, there are some areas of concern. Overall production has fallen by 10, over 10%, 10 and we continue to see oil uh, production decline to levels that haven't been seen in Indonesia since the 1960s. It's expected that uh, Indonesia's oil production will be half of today's levels, struggling to stay above 400,000 barrels a day. And so that's, that's certainly very concerning. But today we live in a, in a world where imports are relatively cheap, right? It's maybe cheaper to import oil or natural gas or LNG than to do your own projects. And uh, that maybe will lull us here in Indonesia into a false sense of security. But we shouldn't be fooled by this false sense of security because we've all seen this movie before many, many times. We know what's going to happen. We know that all it takes is a tightening of supply and demand coupled with some geopolitical issue and we're gonna have price spikes that we've seen in the past. So helping Indonesia meet its energy needs and be prepared for the future requires consistent investment. And investment in our industry, as we all know in this room, is a long-term proposition. Investors prioritize their investments across the entire globe now. And for companies with available capital, while prices may be low, opportunities right now are plentiful. If you have money to invest, there's companies to be bought and assets to access around the world that weren't there in higher price times. So to compete for capital, I think our, our IOC investors are really looking for three, three things. And they're easy to say, but very difficult to do. But the first is, is globally competitive fiscal terms that recognize the needs of the company to make the investment while rewarding the government. And those terms need to be durable. They need to last over the decades of the investment. The second thing is a stable business environment with a streamlined bureaucracy. Third, we need a clear, predictable, and consistent regulatory process. Again, over decades, because that's, that's the timeline that massive upstream investments function over. But I think by working together, we can get back to stimulating the upstream oil and gas industry and continue to meet Indonesia's growing energy needs.